Hello and thanks for watching. In this short example, we are going to just go from the state sequence to the flip-flop input functions and we're going to assume that we're using JK flip-flops. So the first thing we have to draw is our state table along with the flip-flop input functions as shown there. Now when we're going to put on the present and next state, we're going to use the sequence. So as you look at it, you can see that we're going from 0 to 2, 2 to 5, 5 to 7, 7 to 4, 4 to 1, and then from 1 back to 0. That step is often forgotten by students. It must begin and end on the same state. Okay, now in order to be able to find our flip-flop input functions, we need to have the excitation table for the JK flip-flop. There is the excitation table on the right in green, and this shows us what we need to put on the J and K input in order to bring uh, the output to the desired state. In this case, we are the state it is currently in would be the zero, and the desired state would be either 0 or 1, or if it was in a 1, the desired state would be either 0 or 1, as shown from the QT plus 1 column. All right, well, we're going to go through this slowly now so that you can follow along. Notice I've circled the first present and next state at the top. And I have actually written in pink the 0x. As you can see, the 0x is used for the j, a, and k, a in the top of the column because both the present state and the next state are 0. And then we've continued to follow the pattern. Okay, so now you can see on the next row, I've circled in green the 1 and the 0. Basically, we're trying to get a 1 to go to a 0 as shown in the blue circling in the excitation table. And in order to do that, we have to put an X and a 1 on the inputs to that flip-flop to cause the 1 to go to a 0. And for our last example, we are going to take the middle one there where the 0 goes to a 0 again. And this time we've circled the 0 to 0 and we've put the 0x. So if you study those three, examples, you should be able to figure out how to fill out the table. We're looking from the present state to the next state for the QT to the QT plus 1, and we're putting on the respective inputs what is shown in our excitation table. Now, we notice that in the KB column, there are no zeros. You need to look for that. If there are no zeros in any given column, if there are only ones and x's, that means that that function is 1. Okay? So just remember that when you are working it out. Okay, now we've drawn five Carnot maps because we do not need one for the KB because that function is a one as we showed before. The first thing we must do is to enter the unused states on all maps as an X. Okay, so the 3 and the 6 are not used. So we have entered the 3 and the 6 in all of the maps. 
steps as an X. Okay, so now we're going to go through very slowly, filling them out. We're going to start with the beginning up top here. We're going to write JA and we're going to fill them out coming down. So we're going to do this slowly so you can follow. In each case, we've gone sequentially down the table. So as you can see for the KA, we start with the X on 0. Then we have the X on 2. Then we have a 0 on 5 and a 0 on 7. Followed by a 1 on 4 and an X on one well if you need to really uh, review this it's it's going so slowly that you can just uh, rewind it and let it go in slow motion for you but basically once you see the pattern you should be able to put on the zeros ones and X's in the correct place on the Carno maps okay so what's the next step? Well, the next step is to circle the groups. As you can see, we're looking for groups of four that we can circle. And uh, in all but one, we have been able to get the desired group of four. Now, when we circle, remember we are only circling because of the ones. We can combine the ones with the X's, but there's no point in circling groups of X's unless it has in a one. So in all these circles you will see here, you will find one as well. So we're just using the X's for a convenience, but basically we are circling the ones and adding the X's where possible. So that's the secret of that. The last thing we need to do now is to interpret the groups. What do these circles mean? So once again, we're going to go very slowly. We're going to start with JA. And that circle means B. And the next one is C bar because that is what is common to all the squares contained within the circle. So it's six functions and we're going to get five of them from these maps. And we have the one which we have already from the function that has no zeros at all, the KB. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.